Right. I'm back. Uh, <laughs> Welcome back to the community, everybody, and thank you all for being part of it, and thank you for the donations that have been coming in. I appreciate any amount. It's been very, very helpful. If you can, drop down in the description. There's a safe, secure link to PayPal if you'd like to donate to the community channel to help out. We have Heather back in a video. It's been a while. I had to aggravate her. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I thought I would grace him with my presence. <laughs> We're going to do something special this week. Uh, and no, I did not forget to work on the car because she's been bugging me about it. I'm still on the guide rail sills. So I got to grab a few things for that. So I'm doing a couple other things that needed to be addressed. One was I had three different emails that I thought was interesting about, can you show the differences between a standard beetle and a super beetle? And I thought, all right. I mean, I'm sure that there's probably a lot of people that don't know all the differences. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So yeah. we're going to go over them the best that we can without a super beetle actually being here. I mean, I could have made a phone call probably and had one here easily. Yeah. But we're going to go over. I'll slide some videos, some pictures in, some voiceovers. And we're going to go over that stuff right now. So sit down, get yourself something to drink. And here so we go. we're talking about Super Beetle versus Standard Beetle, or versus is probably a bad thing. The differences between the Super Beetle and the Standard Beetle. Let me uh, read something quickly first, though. Okay, the history of the VW Beetle. Uh, this is very brief. Volkswagen produced the VW Beetle for 65 years until 2003, becoming one of the longest running cars in existence, all right? In that time, the company produced over 21 million. That's a lot of wow. the people's car, right? Yeah. Now, I'm sure a lot of you know that, but I had to throw that in there. Did the car stay the same over the years? Actually, no. There were changes from time to time. Volkswagen released the VW Beetle in 1938. And the car evolves significantly after that with changes made out to alter the vehicle's performance and appearance. And that's true. Mm -hmm. There, I think a lot of folks really believe that, that really don't know them that well, just like I don't know certain cars, that there was differences in a lot of the Beatles yeah. over the years. Mm -hmm. yeah. And some of it was changed for safety, some for comfort, you know, more power. Right. Uh, so, yeah. There was differences, split window, oval. I mean, there was a lot more than people think. I think a lot of people that don't really pay attention to Volkswagens don't understand that. Yeah, right. Because before I was with you right, and I was a young girl, I always thought Beatles were all the same. Yeah, it was I a Beetle. Know. It's a Beetle. Yeah. But now through the years of owning them and seeing them, it's like, wow, there are so many different features. Yeah, and there was a features. lot of special edition Beatles. Maybe we can do another film one day because there was special edition Beatles that people don't realize. And if you folks want to see that, leave it in the comments because there was special edition Beatles. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can do another film at a later date on that. That would be fun. Yeah, I think yeah. so too. The Super Beetle was the only one on the market for less than a decade. Volkswagen first offered the Super Beetle in 1971, with the vehicle staying in production until 1979. During the 1970s, many different compact car manufacturers began to step up their competition with the VW Beetle. These other compact vehicles gave buyers a more comfortable experience. Customers chose other cars over the Beetle due to the standard version's cramped design. Now, since VW wanted to bring the drivers back to the compact car, they created the Super Beetle to address the main complaints that drivers had about the standard model. This upgraded Beetle came with a few new feature and larger designs to increase passengers' comfort. So when was the Super Beetle made? That's a good question. The Super Beetle was released in 1971, okay? And the 71 and 72 models were called a 1302. Later in 1973, they released a new Super Beetle called the 1303. 
However, the improved Super Beetles were made from 71 through 79, just like the original VW Bug. There were three different versions. The sedan was made until 1975. Yeah. The sedan with the sunroof and convertible were made from 1971 until 1979. I like the sunroof models. I do too. You know, our 73 Super Beetle was a sunroof model. Our 68 is a sunroof model. And if you remember the blue 74, the California one we bought from that guy at the storage unit, it was a sunroof model and that was a nice car. I like the convertibles. They look they're like pleasing to the eye. Yes. And I do enjoy riding in them as right. a treat. Right. But I don't know if I would want a convertible. They're nice. I like them a lot, but I know what you mean. Uh, I feel maybe too exposed in one. Right. I don't know. I ex exposed. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> okay. I like the sunroof, though. And I yeah. like the vent wings, you know. Right. like right. You get all that air. Oh, absolutely. But too much air yeah. can kind of almost hinder. Yeah, the fun of it. You're almost you're... like you're on a bike. Right, exactly. You know? That makes sense. So, what is the differences? Okay, that's where we're going to start into now. One of the major differences was McPherson struts. You know, the shocks with the coil over. Uh, that's what I call them. And it gave a much smoother ride, better control and handling. Oh, look. Another beetle. And another beetle. So, the McPherson struts were one of, actually probably the biggest additions to them. The standard Beetles were designed to use torsion bars, while the Super Beetle models were upgraded to a McPherson strut and coil spring setup. And here's a quick clip of me showing the torsion bars. Okay. All right. Nice. We'll That's check the them out and we'll inspect them in a second. Okay. Doing this actually changed and increased the ride quality because of the Beatles poor turning radius and ride comfort level, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, if you ever test drove a standard Beetle and then of course a Super Beetle, you would notice the difference. And I am not defaming standard Beetles because we love them. I love them, yeah. But when you do hit a cigarette butt, bang, I mean, it's you can feel it. The Super Beetles, they are a smoother ride. They corner very nicely. The turning radius is so much tighter, you can almost turn it into a perfect circle. So the McPherson struts in the front suspension made a huge difference. So that is something different that you'll notice when it comes to super versus standard is the, Mc the McPherson struts basically in the front suspension on them. Okay, next we're going to do dash differences. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so in 1968, the standard had a padded dash added to it due to the regulations and safety. Yeah, and you know, before I continue with this, the padded dash, I like the metal dash. I think they're yeah. beautiful. The padded dash was very thin. Now, as you can see when I remove one here, the dash pads were very thin, but they were put in due to government regulations. Once removed, that is just like the old school dash. So if you ever did want to remove one, you can do it easily and take it back in time, technically speaking. If something happened, yeah, it wasn't it's... stopping anything, but it was a United States regulation, and that's what they did. But some people like the padded dash. Uh, the 71 and 72 Super Beetle had the same dash as the 68, 69, 70. It was just a flat dash. So they did have the same ones. In 73, they made further adjustments to the Super Beetle to distinguish it from the standard, including the introduction of a curved windshield, flatter roofline, and a much larger dash. And that's what Gracie was, our 73. And you See, can... I prefer the ones with the... You like the flat dash. Because to me, even if you touch a padded dash, they don't feel like... Yeah. There's yeah. no difference. They're hard really. vinyl. They're high... Yeah. It's almost the same. It is. Like, and honestly... If you're going to knock your teeth out, you're going to knock your teeth out on either yeah, one. Yeah, and you're probably going to hit the windshield, sadly. Yeah, <laughs> so, I mean... I like the metal dash look. I think it's nicer. The Euro models had that a lot later on. Uh, 
they did some uh, changes with the roof line, uh, making it a little flatter on the curved windshield Super Beetles. Uh, always be careful with the curved windshields because here's a quick clip here. Okay, so centered in the window. You got bring it come down, bring the bottom down. Bring the lift, oh. put your finger in there. Here you go. Yeah. Oh, oh, there, okay. You see, then it'll center it up. Okay, I'm. Oh, there. this is really slippy. Feeling that you want to hit it. Yeah, I know. Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> and that's me and a friend of mine installing one while Heather had filmed us. And here's the difference. Uh, here's some photos of the different dashes. And that's what we're talking about when it comes to the dash differences. There's major differences with that stuff. So now, what are we getting into now here? Length and width. Length and width, okay. One of the primary distinctions between the Super Beetle and the Standard standard Beetle is their size. Yes, it is. In all honesty, uh, VW designed the Super Beetle a little bit longer and wider, although it's only, I think, without me trying to look it up, it's only like two inches inside width and three inches overall length of the car. Uh, so it really wasn't that much. I don't think anybody would You wouldn't catch, catch it. it. Yeah, if you were just no. looking at the length or the width, yeah, you wouldn't catch it going down the road. No, you're not going like, to. Not that much. But I guess they tried. You know, <laughs> they wanted to make it a little bit more roomy, although I really don't believe the Super Beetle is that much roomy. Technically, measuring them, they yeah. are a little bit bigger. Yeah. Uh, the Super Beetle is actually two inches longer, I believe, than the standard completely. But... Yeah. They did help out with the trunk space a lot, though. Now, one thing that did change was the storage capacity. Mm -hmm. And we've owned a lot of Super Beetles to know over the years. Uh, one of the most notable changes they made in the Super Beetle was the storage capacity in the trunk space. Uh, we used to actually go to Walmart and get groceries <laughs> in our Super yeah. Beetle. So, I mean, they did change that a lot. Now, with the increased length is what really helped out a little bit Uh it gave an advantage to turn a spare tire down that I'll show you in a second. And uh, the space needed to store a tire and leave room for other items really helped out with the way they designed it. To determine whether a Beetle is a, the standard version or a Super Beetle, check how the spare tire fits in the front trunk. Now, as you notice here, there is much more room compared to the standard. And I'm not putting the standard Beetles down because I own one and I've owned many of both. However, just with that additional couple of inches of length, you can see how they were able to take the spare tire and lay it flat instead of wedged, if that makes any sense. And it really helped with the trunk space. You know, it made a notable difference. And truthfully, I think it was a great thing to do because then you were able to go grocery shopping or do the things that you needed to do. I think this really helped the sales of the Beetle for a little while since uh, a lot of people were looking into a little more comfort and a little more space. So this definitely, I think, was a really good idea. Of course, that's just my personal opinion on that. You've seen in the pictures and the video I showed, actually three cubic feet was added to the trunk space. Wow. So it really made a difference with the tire, spare tire laying flat instead of up on, I guess, end, you know. So, and we did. We took our shopping a lot, our Super yeah. Beetle we had. Mm -hmm. This is not knocking standards, by the way. I'm just trying to show the differences. Right. Because Heather actually favors standards, and I like both. So it's kind of like you a hit or miss. You make do what you have anyway. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. so let's go on to the next thing. Next, we have the vented apron. On the front is a dead giveaway that it's a Super Beetle. And that's true. Everybody sees them little slots. People that are around Beetles, enough, they know right away it's a Super. Yep. This was designed to allow airflow to an optional air conditioner. Look under the front bumper. Yeah, because those slots let the air through. I don't know what was there. I'm not really good with AC, but I think it was the condenser or something. So... When you see them slots under there, like Heather said, 
yeah, that was for air conditioning. So can you eliminate those if you don't have air? That's a very good question. Yes. And I'm surprised you brought that up because I didn't tell her to do that. I eliminated it. Just, it. I, I just was thinking, like, couldn't you just... Yeah, because you don't need that airflow no longer. On Gracie, if you remember the first uh, beetle we did on here, Yeah. I eliminated the slots on there. I actually used fiberglass resin, uh, me and a buddy of mine, and filled it in. Right. And I thought it looked better. without those but then that's all personal opinion i guess you know yeah so i mean truthfully yeah that was a good one the vented apron in the front that's a dead giveaway every time i forgot that. you did that yeah. <laughs> the front end. yeah do the vw beetles and super beetles require different parts while some vw owners do think that you can easily swap parts back and forth they're wrong okay the super beetle and standard beetles have unique requirements know the two beetles apart. Uh, usually what I like to say is from the front of the front doors back, they're basically the same. But when you get towards the front end, the front fenders, the trunk in the front or the bonnet, the front aprons, they are different. So there is differences. And especially if you get to 73 with the curved dash, I'm sorry, the curved windshield, with a larger dash, then no, that wouldn't be interchangeable with an older standard. So right. there are differences where you can't change things up without doing some serious modification. So that's that. Are all convertible beetles super beetles? Uh, no, they're not. Only convertibles that were made between 71 and 79 are super beetle convertibles. During this period, you were unable to order a standard beetle or a bug convertible. So 71 to 79 supers, like Ted's that you see here. What a clean car. I love it. All right, Ted is here. Is a Super Beetle convertible. So that's to answer that question. So does the Super Beetles have elephant foot taillights? Well, all beetles that were made between 1973 and 1979 had those big round elephant foot taillights. Yeah, the big circular ones like you see here. And prior to that, though, they had the smaller taillights, you know, 68, 69, 70 style, technically speaking. But, but uh, also the VW thing used the round elephant, yeah. elephant uh, taillights. Uh, I was never a big fan of the big round taillights, but they even sell custom ones you can use now. And I know I'm getting off track here with this, but uh, yeah, the Super Beetles do have the elephant foot taillights from 73 to 79. So that's that. So is the motor in the Super Beetle different than a standard Beetle? Actually, since 1970, both Standard Beetle and Super Beetle, since 71, used the 1600 dual port engine, actually 1584 cc in North America, the ones that you're used to seeing. Okay, yeah. Now, one thing I might add to this is in Europe, there was an S or LS in 1302S, 1303S, and 1302LS indicates that the car is equipped with a 1600 cc engine disc brakes in the front and other trim items i didn't know that yeah that's interesting and that's the euros they they had it made that way while the versions without the s or the ls though featured a 1300 cc with that drum brakes on all corners so they kind of got demoted on that one <laughs> <laughs> so just to recover something what was the first year of the super beetle convertible 1971 was the first year of the topless Super Beetle, which it was referred to. Uh, from them, from that year on, all the convertibles would all be the Super Beetle variety. Just to go over that once more, in case it didn't sound normal earlier. Here's an extra tip. The Super Beetles came with the 1600cc engine only in North America. And that's true. In the European countries, the Super Beetle could be bought with a 1200 1300 or a 1600 engine so they had a little bit of variety yeah. over there that they could get 
Each of these engines have a unique two-letter code stamped into the block just under the alternator or generator stand. Now, what I'm going to do is show just a quick slideshow here of some Super Beetles and standards for your enjoyment. And I just wanted to rush those through because I find both of them amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, in all honesty, you got to love, you know, 66 and back, how they're always a big fan of the headlights, how they're sunk yes, back into I the thunders. I love that. Yeah, she did. You've always, yeah. she said, make chaos that way. But I'm trying to keep her close to stock for except the motor. You know, we're going to need more horsepower. But uh, what we can do in the near future, if anyone's interested, they did a lot of special edition beetles, the sports bug, and of course, I think there was an empty bug I'll have to check into. If you do want to see that, please leave it in the comments below because we can do a special edition, you know, beetle slideshow and talk about them. I think that'd be a lot of fun. And when you get a chance, check out these two great websites, superbeetles.com and allaircold.com. Great sites. So I appreciate all you being here, and Heather, thank you. You're I missed welcome. I missed her being in films. Uh, Don't forget your T-shirts and stickers and all your gear. Drop down in the description, and um, get your your member sticker. Yeah. You know. There's no? member stickers. Uh, you also you don't have to, to do anything special to be a member. No, just, just be here. Hit like. Subscribe, subscribe and i'll start putting up more of what i did recently of where shows are in each state because uh adam and darren that's how they met each other had the shirts on we're at a show and went hey and that was in north carolina yep so try to support the channel if you possibly can i'd really really appreciate it and we'll get heather in some more videos i got the guide rails to do and a little bit of body work so i really don't want her in a garage when i'm doing that and we got to try our new welder out. We have a lot to do. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. that's why you've been seeing a couple videos each week. So thanks, everybody. Uh, I possibly will be on tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern time for the Friday night club meeting chat. Everybody, be nice to each other and stay safe.